Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, so I feel like I've mentioned the sclera so many times now in the first few lectures, and now it's time to just look at it and talk about its structure and its main functions, uh, which are really quite simple, mostly structural, and we'll go over a few different things. Uh, but you know, I guess one of the most important things here is that we stop calling that part of the eye, the white part of the eye, and start referring to it as the correct term, the sclera. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best start. And then from there, let's go into a few different things here that we should know about this structure. So first of all, let's take a look at a cross section of the eye once again. And let's highlight the sclera. So you'll notice that the sclera kind of covers all the way around. It even covers the optic nerve in the back. It is an enormous structure. It actually covers five sixths of the total globe. Uh, and as a matter of fact, like you can see it right here, the only part of the exterior portion of the eyeball that's not sclera is the cornea, which we've already talked about. So like I've mentioned, commonly known as the white part of the eye, the sclera is the opaque, fibrous and tough outer layer of the eye. Very tough. It's, it needs to be tough because this is the main structural component of the eye and it's also one of the main protections from any kind of external forces. And it's prime. It's primarily composed of tough collagen fibers. Remember at the beginning, one of the first lectures we did, we talked about the different tunics of the eye and we talked about the fibrous tunic uh, with being the sclera and the cornea. So the, in both the, the Sclera and the cornea are both made of collagen fiber fibers, which are very fibrous tissues. Uh, it's continuous with the dura matter of the cornea. Okay, so they're you know kind of blends in, forming a junction. Sorry, junction at the we talked about this limbus, and continuing around the entire globe to the posterior where it, posterior where it covers the optic nerve. So all the way around. Now the functions of the sclera. Here they are are to provide protection and support to the globe against external forces. It keeps things kind of up, right? It's kind of like the bricks and mortar to a building. It keeps everything in the shape and structure that it's supposed to be. It also provides attachment sites for the extraocular muscles, the muscles of the eye that move it around. Uh, it needs to attach somewhere and they attach to the sclera. Now, the majority of the blood vessels on the sclera are at its surface in a structure that we call the episclera and in the fronter the fronter the 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 front portions of the eye uh the blood vessels you're seeing are not actually the scleral or episcleral vessels they're probably the vessels of the conjunctiva but when examining the eye in, in a slit lamp uh, you can actually look a little deeper than the conjunctiva and see that there are small blood vessels at the top of the sclera and that's in the episclera. Um, interestingly, I didn't really write much down about this in the slides. However, the sclera too can get inflamed. You know, we talked about in the last lecture about the conjunctiva, how um, the conjunctiva is kind of like that safety net that keeps everything uh, out and makes sure that there's an immune response if there's any kind of pathogens. The episclera, those blood vessels can become inflamed too. Now, it's a little more concerning when the episclera becomes inflamed because that kind of means that either the conjunctiva has kind of failed at protecting the eye or the inflammation is coming from layers beneath that, right? It's from the sclera, from from the, from even the choroid or or what it, whatever it may be. So these are kind of issues that can occur. They're not nearly as common as conjunctivitis, but it is important to know that, um, you know, the sclera, if if there's a pinkish hue to the eye or, or redness to the eye, it's not always the conjunctiva, it can also be the episclera that's inflamed. So again, what is the significance to us? Why do we need to know about the sclera? Well, 
when one thing that we need to you know, reiterate that we just talked about is that when you're looking at the sclera, you're actually looking at the conjunctiva from our standpoint and through the conjunctiva, you're looking at the sclera. Uh, remember the limbus, right? The junction between the cornea sclera and the conjunctiva. This is an important spot that you need to know as an optician because we are going to refer to the limbus over and over again in fitting bifocals, in, in fitting uh, contact lenses. It's just like, what are those reference points that is commonly used? So make sure you're quite familiar with where the limbus is. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to remember where that is. Um, not innervated, not sensitive to touch. That's something I haven't mentioned is the fact that, you know, kids will sometimes do these little tricks where they say, look, I could touch my eye. They are definitely not touching their cornea when they're doing that, because we talked about that already. Uh, cornea is highly innervated, one of the most sensitive tissues in the body. They touch the, the cornea, they're gonna have a bad time. Uh, the sclera, however, not innervated. So it can be touched, not recommended. However, it is not an innervated tissue. It's just there uh, with no real sensation. And the most important part, of the sclera is that it protects the context, the contents of the eyeball. It's the walls uh, that protect all the internal structures of the eye to make sure that A, the eyeball remains in its shape and supported the way it's supposed to be, and B, if you ever encounter any kind of traumatic experience, it's tough enough to a certain degree to withstand that trauma. So that does it for the sclera. This is a pretty simple one. There's not a whole lot you need to know about the sclera other than it's there and the, the simple properties that we talked about. I think we're ready now to move on to uh, other parts of the eye. So we'll see you in the next lecture.